this video is a tutorial to accompany the Fisherman's Winter Beanie Hat, which is a classic ribbed crochet beanie. The crown is constructed with seams rather than uh, gathering all around, so you don't end up with that extra bulk fabric at the crown of the head. The free pattern is available for the four ply size in a, a standard adult, which is this one. The pattern is also available in double knit and Aran or worsted weight. The full premium pattern includes all three weights, each weight in four sizes, that is toddler, child, adult and large adult. But the free pattern for the four ply adult version is available on the blog, which is linked to below. The pattern is constructed almost entirely from slip stitches with the odd chain thrown in. And in this video, I'm just going to show you some of the techniques that you'll use and little tips and tricks to make it easier for you to follow the pattern. The pattern, like many typical ribbed beanies in crochet, is worked from side to side, but it has these peaks which are joined to form the crown. So I'm going to start by looking at slip stitches. In this row, I'm working up to the top of the pattern. So here is the brim of the hat and this section up here is going to be the peak. You work slip stitches in the back loop only for the majority of the pattern. That creates this amazing stretchy ribbed fabric. And I know a lot of people are really intimidated by slip stitches. So I'm going to give you my tips for how I work slip stitches so they're really enjoyable to work. So often the working slip stitch is kind of dependent on how you hold your yarn. I don't probably don't hold my yarn the most common way, I've just lost my loop, um, but I do actually alter the way I hold my yarn for working slip stitches. So normally I'd wrap my hand around like that, that little finger, and then I would work like that. For this pattern, I drop that extra wrap and I just hold the yarn loosely over my index finger like that. Um, and I kind of hold the, hold the work with the rest of my hand. You can modify any type of yarn hold for, and hook hold indeed for, for this, but the key with slip stitching is to really keep your tension loose. It's very easy when you're slip stitching to tighten up, tighten up, and then it just becomes very difficult to work a slip stitch into a slip stitch. So let's get on with this. So essentially, what I see often with slip stitches is people yarning over, pulling through, and then doing it in this double motion, which is fine, it works, but the way I do it, and the way I find it makes it easier, is to do it all in one motion. So I've inserted my hook, I'm gonna kind of, I barely need to yarn over, because I'm effectively just, um, inserting the hook under the yarn and then you just pull through in one go so I'm gonna keep doing that slowly and it's literally just getting into that pattern so I'll get kind of faster so you literally just work it all in one all in one go and like I say, the key is keeping your tension relaxed. I know a lot of people hold their yarn like this and that becomes difficult because you kind of have to grab it and then, you know, so have a play and see if you can find a way to adjust your yarn hold that, that will work for this stitch. And also if, you, if you're working your sti sti slip stitches really tight, it can be really hard to like dig in. And sometimes with this pattern, because obviously there's a lot of slip stitching, my tension does vary across the pattern. Um, if you want a tight fitting hat, then tighten your tension. Beware that slip stitching into tight stitches is, you see, is uh, less enjoyable. So I'm just going to, this is a wrong side row. The wrong side rows are worked from the brim to the peak. And the right side rows are worked the other way down. So I'm going to finish working this row and then I'm going to show you how to work an increase. So you work your rows across like that, 
you go up to the increase, which is going to be the tallest point, and then you start decreasing down the other side. The bottom is going to be flat. I'll show you later how to make sure you get a neat bottom uh, brim and that you don't lose your slip stitches as you work. So let's just finish this slip stitch row. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of the row. That last stitch can be a little bit tricky to, to see, but it's that one there. And I know that I've got 66 stitches in this row and I want to increase, so I'm gonna have 68 in the next row. So I'm gonna turn my work and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Then I'm gonna start in the second chain from the hook. Now, often when you work into chains, you work into these back loops, but it's not how we're gonna do it here because we're gonna see the chains. You can kind of see, this yarn is a little bit fluffy, but you can kind of see the chains just actually continue from the look of the slip stitches. So we're gonna effectively work in the back loop of the chain, which is gonna be this bit here. So that first, the, the third chain will kind of count as the chain, the a turning chain one. So we're going to ignore that chain because we want to increase by two. So we're going to work in the back loop of the second chain from hook, which is there. You can kind of you pull it reasonably tight here. I do pull the yarn up a little bit more in the first row of the stitch so I can find it when I'm coming back. So that's the first increased stitch and then the second increased stitch. And then I'm just going to continue slip stitching in the back loop of the slip stitch from the row before. And I'm going to do that all the way down to the base. And that is my increase made. OK, so I'm coming to the end of the row. And the last stitch of the row, so I've got two stitches left. I have this back loop here and then this back loop here. So I'll slip stitch into that back loop. But then at the end of the row, in order to make sure you have this kind of nice, neat edge, and it all, this also stops extra stretch, I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop as I do normally. And then I'm going to insert it into the unworked loop of the previous row. So effectively, when you turn around, you've got your back loop and your front loop. When you, that front loop isn't worked into. So when I go onto the other side, I can work into it. And what that does is just create that extra little bit of security. It takes a little bit of getting used to where it is, but you'll kind of see it as you start to work. And that does create this um, almost like um, dappled almost pattern at the bottom. You can use, you can prefer to have whichever side you like. I mentioned that the rows that go from rim to the peak are the wrong side rows, but if you prefer, it, it depends how you're gonna wear your hat. So. As a wrong side, it means when the right side, you're going to see that on edge on the front. But if you turn your hat up, you're going to see this edge on the front. So have a think about that. It only the wrong and right side only really matter um, when you add your seams because when you seam the top bit, you're going to want your seams to be on the wrong side. So that I'll just show you with this one. So that uh, when the hat is finished, you have these nice neat seams on the outside I can promise you they don't look that neat on the inside so just have a little think about that before you add your seams but I'll come back to that so the other the other side to making a nice neat brim is to start your rows um, in a way that works so I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and normally when I turn I kind of keep my working yarn at the back so I'd normally turn like that so I can work straight into the back loop of that stitch which is the last stitch of the previous row 
But when I was uh, developing this hat, I found I kept losing this last, the, the first slip stitch. So when I came back to work into it, I found it quite difficult to, to find the right loop. So what I do is I actually turn the other way. So, so my working yarn will kind of go underneath the hook. So you can see it's kind of almost in the way, but if you pull it to the back and then work your slip stitch, what this does, it just creates this little bit extra kind of height. You can see these little dots and it means that this, so this slip stitch I've just created, it just makes it a lot easier to find when you come back to work down the other side. I only do this at the brim side. I don't do it at the at the top side because at the top side um, it's all going to be seamed. So it doesn't matter if that's a bit rough edges. Okay, so I'm going to carry on slip stitching in the back loop only. Now this is going to be a decrease row. So I'm going to decrease by two stitches. So I'm going to go from 68 stitches, which is what I had in the previous row, to 66. And I'm basically going to slip stitch up to two stitches from the end. So I'm coming to the end of this row. And I confess I haven't counted. It can be, like I said earlier, quite hard to see that last slip stitch, but I think those are the last two stitches left. I'm just going to take a moment and count to check that I am correct. Yep, that's right. 66 stitches. The, the most difficult part about this pattern is basically counting because when you're on a decrease row, you kind of really need to check that your stitch count is right. So I'm de decreasing from 68 stitches, which is in my peak row, which is the tallest row, to 66. You're only, with most of the rows, you make two rows with the same stitch count, except the top row and the shortest row, where you only make one repeat. So this row here had 68 stitches, that's where we made the increase. And then this one is going to have 66 and the next one is going to have 66. And then we'll repeat that decrease pattern by working to two to the end. So to turn on a decrease, I'm going to chain one. Now, this, is going, this chain one is actually going to count as my first slip stitch. Hang on. Got my yarn all backwards. OK, so I'm going to chain one and turn, turn, chain one, whichever is your preference. So... This here is the chain one, and then this is the 66th slip stitch. So I'm actually going to miss that one because this is going to count as a stitch. And I'm going to uh, work in the second stitch down. So chain one, last stitch, slip stitch of the previous row. And then this is where I'm going to work as my first slip stitch. But that chain one is going to count as one slip stitch. So effectively, I'll still have, although I'll only make 65 slip stitches, I will have 66 stitches on this row altogether. And I'm just going to keep on slip stitching down. So I'm going to go and I'm going to finish working all of these peaks. And then I'll come back and show you how to join and how to seam your hat. Okay, so I finished working my hat across. Uh, you can see here where I started um, my tension. I started a lot looser and you can see that my tension has tightened up but evened out over the last few sections. I've got a bit of a lean here, which isn't too much of a problem. What I could do is to block all this out just so my tension evens out a bit. It, normally I would block this out just so I get nice um, straight edges along the bottom but with hats often they kind of stretch into shape with wear and for the purpose of this demonstration I'm just going to leave it as it is. I think it's quite useful to see the things that can go a little bit off centre. Um, okay so the next plan is to essentially fold the two sides over and join it. So I've finished 
on this decrease row. So I now have 50, there's 56 stitches on this row. The minimum, which you see in the centre here, is 54 stitches. So I've not worked that 54 stitch row because I'm going to use that as uh, the row that I join. So to join the sides together, this is the way I found which gives the most invisible seam. There's loads of ways you can join it. You can stitch it if you prefer, but this is the way I recommend if you want to try and keep your seam subtle. So you can see I've worked that last stitch. Let's just pull that out and work it. So the last stitch of the row. Let's just pull up that. It's worked into the back loop and this loop here, this loop is important because this is the unworked loop of the previous row. So I'm just going to slip stitch through that. The reason I say it's important is because when it comes to join, I'm going to use that loop. So, see, okay, this, these loops here are the unworked loops from the previous row. If you turn it, you can see these are my slip stitches. From the last row so what I'm going to do I'm going to miss that all together and I'm going to work into these loops now on the first stitch I've kind of worked into it so you can see where the yarn is coming out there that's my loop and um, it can be a little bit tricky to see but once you kind of get working you know so I'm going to use that loop and what that will do is that will push this into what will become the, the outside of the hat. So you'll get another rib. I'll show you when I start working it. Okay, so I'm gonna work it through that. Then if we go here, we end up, we've got the um, original chain, which I've kept really loose because I really wanted to keep my attention loose at the beginning of this hat and it has, like I say, it's tightened up. But so this is the starting chain. So I'm going to work it into the front loop of the starting chain. Now you can work it into the back loop, um, but what I found is when you work it into the front loop, on the inside of the hat, you also get quite an invisible seam, which helps when you want to um, fold the brim up. So let's just grab my yarn, just pull some out. Oh, I've got some twisting going on there. Okay, so we're slip stitching through the unwork loop and the front loop of the starting chain and I'm just going to pull it through like that. First, The first stitch is always the most fiddly and I'm not very good at keeping things neat when I'm on camera. So then I'm going to work through these loops. So that there is the next unwork loop. So through there and then through the front loop of the starting chain. And I'm going to do 54 of these stitches. So I'm not going to work right to the end because this is essentially also a decrease row. So what I'll do is I'll just work a few. And when, when you work into them, they kind of pull up, but you can always see which the next loop is because it sort of links into the previous one that you've just worked. If you struggle to find it, what you can do is if you just turn the work and you can see that this is here is the slip stitch. So you want to work in the bit just behind the slip stitch. Grey possibly isn't the best colour to show it to you in, but um, especially because this has a bit of a halo, this yarn. Again, keep your work quite relaxed. So I haven't worked all the way up, but I'll just stop and show you for a moment what this is going to look like. So if I open it out, you can see there's a little, um, you do have a little ridge there, but if you turn it to the right side of the hat, you can see how, compared to a lot of joining methods, it just blends in quite nicely. You can kind of see that is a bit of a thicker ridge because you've essentially push two of these together but 
unless you're looking for it, it's going to be quite hard to see that. So I'll just carry on joining up to up to the top, but I'll be two stitches from the end, so it'll be about there. And then we're going to look at how to seam how to seam the crown. Okay, so that's my last slip stitch. So I've completed my join. Again, it's quite well hidden. Next, what I want to do is to create the crown of the hat. So essentially, let's just get that out of the way. All these peaks are going to come together to form the crown of the hat, these six peaks, like so. What you might want to do is pin pin them all together. You could use a interlocking stitch marker to pin them all together. I will freestyle it, but it might help you to make sure you're sewing the right bits to the right bits. But essentially all we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch this to there so we're going to stitch these two up here, then we're going to go to the next one and we'll stitch down here. You're going to need three separate pieces of yarn to do this. So you stitch down here, then I'll rejoin the yarn here, stitch up there, and then I'll stitch down there. And then the final one, I'm going to stitch up there to the top and down there. I've probably made that sound a lot more complicated than it is because it's really not. This um, this is my starting tail here, which can get in the way a little bit. Um, so let's just pull that through and then I'll thread a yarn needle. And then we'll get started. So when I when I changed um, when I changed to a new ball of yarn here, I've left. I finished the row. I had quite a lot of yarn left, but I finished the row and then joined the the new yarn at the top of a row, so that avoids any knots in the body of the hat. But obviously, I've got quite a bit of yarn left. But I just thought I'll leave that, and I will um, use it to to do the sewing part. So I like to use mattress stitch, so I'm going to align the top peaks. Now this one is where you can see I've got quite a different in my difference in my tension, but actually I can stitch it together in a way that will kind of hide, hide all the sins. So I use mattress stitch, which is basically sewing from the inside like so. I'm going to sew along so you can see where we've got the, the decreases and increases, it's a bit stepped. So I'm going to kind of sew at that angle. So the seams on the inside are going to look quite bobbly because you're going to have these bits sticking out, but that's fine. It's just important that you make sure you catch all these bubbles in your seam. If you have a prefer preferred way of seaming, then that's absolutely fine to use what works for you. But I'll show you how I will do it. When you start at the bottom, to make sure you have nice smooth corners, let me show you on one that's done. So to make sure you have kind of nice smooth corners and not like dense, you can see here where the kind of rows line up. You kind of need to sew a little bit back on yourself and that will just smooth out those edges. So I'm just going to start with a couple of stitches back over the part I've just done and it can be easy to lose your lose your steps so keep um keep lining those up I say that little tail can be a little pest Because I've messed up my tension on this sample, I'm going 
gonna try and make up for that here. You can kind of count these steps just to make sure they're all aligned and that you're staying on track. Sewing, as you can probably tell, not my strongest point when it comes to crochet, but if I can do it, means you can too. I actually often will sew into these, sort of into the center of the slip stitches when the needle comes out and that just helps them to align. So I'll stop talking and do more sewing. So I've just got to the top that first let's see how I've done so that's not too bad I could do with going over this bit again and just catching some of those you can see there that bit sticking through but what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll neaten up the seams when I'm when I'm done like I could say that was the hardest seam to start with because of my um tension issues so that's the first one I'm gonna so the next one so that's the peak there, which I'm going to join to, do you know what, I'll work this way just to keep this out of the way. So if I go through, back through to this peak on this side, and I'm going to join it to the next one along, and I'm going to sew down that way. It's a good idea, like I say, just to See, I've got something strange in the yarn there, but um, just to line up, so you kind of fold it at the base and then you can line up the little steps and that's a good way. You, it probably makes a lot more sense to, to pin this together. Um, I'm a bit of a renegade in that I tend to freestyle things. So I'll just... So down this way. So as you get to the end, this is um, what I mentioned about just going a little bit into that top of the shortest row just to, I kind of pull those together either side of the fold, just to try and soften that um, corner a little bit. Show you what I mean. So, this one's a little bit more successful than the last. So you can kind of see, you just want to soften so you don't get a kind of indent. Um, I'll put a couple more stitches just to soften this area here but you can see that it lines up quite nicely. So next what I'll do I'll put some more indents there and then I'll start some a new yarn I've probably got enough left there and I'll work up and down so I'll work up joining those and then down joining that one and then for the last one I have the same I'll join those two and work down again so I'm going to go and do that you probably don't need to see that and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished I'm coming to the end of the last seam I'm just going to do a few in that fold row I haven't checked this seam yet but you can see 
you can see now how the points kind of all come together it's obviously the inside and I've got some tails to sew in if I pull this round I need to check this seam and I do advise checking the seams as you work and then you can neaten them up so you can kind of see on the other side I maybe need to neaten up a little bit at the um where all the points meet I've got a little bit of a bulge there but generally I'm pretty pleased with that so then oh look as if by magic you can see how the finished hat starts to look so there we have it I'm going to go and tidy that up I hope you've enjoyed the pattern.